Hey, how's it going everyone? So if you saw my first laptop review, I was reviewing the Zenbook Duo 15, which is a more content creator style laptop that has the two screens. I kind of listed out the pros and cons. And in the search for a replacement for my daily driver laptop, I kind of stumbled upon the Legion 5 Pro, which has a 3070 Ti, kind of had a minor defect in it. So I ended up getting the 3060 version as well. And to make light of the situation of having both of these, as they're identically spec'd in terms of everything but the GPUs, I kind of wanted to go into a little bit of a comparison between the two and what might be best for you in terms of uh, the actual power, if you need the extra power. There is also the 3070 version, which falls kind of right in between the two. So I wanted to go into a little bit of detail of the GPU comparisons. I've been using these for a while now, probably four or five months. And so walk you a little bit through my experience with them. I think they're you know, obviously very good at gaming, but they're also really good at content creation. I think the 3060 is probably one of the best bang for the buck laptops of the year. And it is in a chassis that is very overdeveloped for the actual GPU. So I think there's some things and tweaks you can do to actually take advantage of the robust chassis and uh, maybe edge the performance a little closer to the 3070 or the 3070 Ti version. Also, I have the chapters kind of listed below. So if you want to skip around in this, if you just want to go to the GPU comparison or my kind of conclusions of the laptops, uh, you can skip around, you can come back to something. So that's there for your convenience. Please uh, use it. So in terms of the CPU, I'm not gonna go into a crazy amount of detail. They both have the 12700H. It is a 14 core, 20 thread processor. In Cinebench R23, I got about 17,700 points. So, you know, it's a very strong processor. I will say the battery life isn't the best. Um, last week I was in a coffee shop kind of editing uh, some gameplay footage for this video. And I was there for about an hour, hour 15, and I went from like 95% down to 10%, just doing some very light editing, some light video conversion, and that was in the ultra like battery saving mode. So they're really not meant for battery life, uh, just, so just know that. They both have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that's running at 4,800 megahertz. All the drivers are also at the latest uh, version as of the time of this recording. So apples to apples comparison here. In terms of some physical aspects of the laptop, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 2560 by 1600. And it's, uh, it's a pretty large chassis, right? So you can see where the screen ends, it does have this cooling area with all the ports and whatnot. So I'll kind of insert a clip here of my current 15 inch laptop compared here in terms of the footprint but it is a very large footprint. So what that means functionally is that it's gonna be pretty hard to fit into a lot of bags. Uh, I have three backpacks that I kind of rotate in and out and it really only fits in one of them. You know, it doesn't fit in my Thule bag, it doesn't fit in my wandered camera bag. It just fits in this old Y3 uh, Yoji Yamamoto bag that I have. And that's because the backside is literally just one big laptop pocket. Now, things that I really like about this are the numpad. I use that a lot. So, you know, while it's a little bit condensed, uh, it is really nice to have. Uh, one downside of that is it kind of shifts a lot of the keyboard features to the left and the trackpad as well. So that does take adjusting to, but it's uh, kind of nice once you get a little bit of that muscle memory going, you can kind of easily get, get used to that. The keyboard's very good. Lenovo's reputation for quality keyboards uh, precedes themselves. It's generally well built overall. You know, there's a lot of metal in the construction, but there are some pieces that are plastic, like some of the vents on the side. The top deck here is metal. There's some inserts on the screen that are plastic and the, uh, you know, port area back here and whatnot is also plastic. IO is really good on this laptop. You know, you have plenty of USB-C ports, uh, you have USB-A ports, HDMI, Ethernet, 
um, USB power delivery, which is nice if you need power in a pinch and you don't want to carry around this gargantuan 300 <laughs> watt charger. Um, also, I don't understand why this thing is so big, yet it is not a wireless charger. I mean, look at that, fits the phone perfectly, right? So, Lenovo, if you're listening. The construction overall, I think, is very good. Now, the I.O. ports are great. I love having them in the back and being able to kind of have a clean workspace and not have uh, interference of all your dangling cables and your power ports here. You might not have even noticed, but I got the power cable here running down, and so it's just completely out of the way, right? From here, I don't even notice it. And that's really nice when uh, you're using this kind of as like a desktop replacement if you don't have a USB hub or if you're just on the go somewhere. The speakers in general, I would say, are pretty anemic. Uh, I can put a sound clip here, but I was pretty underwhelmed with them most of the time. I always felt like I wanted 25% more volume in most situations when it was a little louder. The highest decibel levels I got on these laptops were about 55, so those were under continuous stress tests, and I would say that if you're using headphones, then it's probably fine to, you know, game under the really high decibel levels on the full tilt mode, but if you are using the internal speakers, then you're probably better off in the auto mode. Like I mentioned, the speakers don't get very loud, so the fan noise can kind of interfere with that a little bit. There is a built-in muck switch in the Vantage software, so that's kind of nice if you want to switch from the hybrid mode where it does Optimus and everything versus just using the dedicated GPU. It makes it pretty easy to do that if you want to gain some extra FPS. Speaking of the software, the Vantage software is good. It allows you to do mild overclocking. The overclocking that I'm going to do later when I talk about the GPU comparison performance and whatnot um, I did that all in MSI Afterburner, but the Vantage software makes it great to set some kind of custom profiles and with one click you can just have those saved and in the memory. So that's really nice. Um, I just prefer kind of more customization in MSI Afterburner and for testing purposes it was a little better. In terms of the RAM upgradeability, uh, there are two slots. It's dual channel RAM. In both of these, I have two by eight, so 16 gigabytes, but they are upgradable to 64 gigs total, and you could even get faster RAM if you wanted to. So that's pretty nice, and you have the NVMe slot, which you can swap out. In terms of pricing, the 3060, why I said it's the bang for buck, is right now on Lenovo's website, it lists for about two grand, and it's almost at 1600. So that's, uh, that's pretty amazing in terms of the performance you're getting for what you're, you're paying. It's a 130 watt TGP, that's total the graphics power, and this is a 150 watt TGP for the 3070 Ti version. So this is a very overpowered 3060. In terms of 3060 laptops, it's probably one of the higher powered ones from all the different manufacturers. So that's why also the tunability is good because it does get a lot of power to it. The 3070 version and the 3070 Ti, they have two gigabytes more VRAM. So if you are you know, a content uh, creator or a professional that's using these, that might be worth it just for the extra two gigabytes of VRAM. This has six gigabytes. The 3070 version, that is actually the best savings of all of them. So it's about 2200 and I think it's a little over 1700 to like 1750 around there. So really good bang for the buck for the 3070 as well. The 3070 Ti is listed at 2400 as of the time of this video and there are no savings on that. So you're really paying a lot for this version. Now in terms of the power brick, uh, the 3060 version, I think at the max power draw that I recorded from the wall, I was getting about 180 while gaming and overclocked. And that falls within kind of the power rule of you want no more power draw than 80% of what your power supply is rated for. So they do make a 230 watt uh, kind of slimmer 
uh, more portable power supply. And I think with the 3060, you could actually get away with using that because 180 is about 78% of uh, 230. The 3070 I don't have, so I can't tell you exactly what the power draw was, but the 3070 Ti at the kind of peak overclock end, I was getting about 220 watts draw. So the 230 watt slimmer adapter wouldn't really make sense for this laptop. Um, you might be able to get away with it, but I wouldn't recommend that. That's probably why they make a 300 watt adapter, which is like overkill for all of these, um, but it just works for all three models. You could probably even run like a 3080 or a 30 Ti off this thing, but that is kind of a downside. It is just gargantuan. Um, but if you are doing the 3060, you know, I could safely say that you could get the uh, 230 watt slim adapter. So now I wanna get into the actual uh, graphics um, comparison of the two chips in here. So without further ado, let's get into that. So comparing the two GPUs, I really wanted to see if the 3070 Ti smokes the 3060 or if there's some overclocking potential that can get you a little bit closer. So looking at some synthetic benchmarks in Geekbench, we can take a look and see that, you know, there is a pretty significant uplift for the 3070 uh, Ti, which is about almost 20% in uh, CUDA, which if you use uh, you know, CUDA accelerate applications like Premiere Pro, Lightroom, or just gaming in general, which is pretty CUDA heavy, um, you will notice a big difference there, right? So the OpenCL performance is a little less at about 17%, but the Vulkan is actually very similar. So with a mild overclock of 100 on the core and 250 on the memory, we can see that the gaps do close in a little bit. And this is with both of them overclocked. So about 8% on uh, OpenCL, and in CUDA, we then see a drop to about 13%, so relatively significant. And um, in Vulkan here, we also see a little bit more in, in the 5% range. Now, if we then just take a look at the OC3060 versus the stock 3070Ti, uh, then things get a little more interesting. It's still about 13% in CUDA and 8% in Vulkan. So the 3070 actually, uh, I believe that if you were to overclock that, and I don't have one you know, as an example, but if you were to overclock that, you could probably get within the five to 10% range difference of the 3070 Ti. And like I said, that one is the best savings of them all. So that's a really interesting option as well. I think you know the 3060 model, while you could push it further because it does have that potential of the overdeveloped chassis, like I mentioned, and it does get a lot of power, uh, you could definitely overclock this more and probably see some more headroom there. But I just wanted to do a mild one for this video just to see if there's uh, some potential there. And now if we take a look at this in terms of actual gaming potential, the interesting thing here is that you know in a game like Rocket League or like an eSports game, uh, if you run it pretty much uncapped, uh, you're gonna see crazy high FPS, but this has a G-Sync 165 Hertz screen. So I would recommend running it at that setting. So between like a 3060 or a 3070 Ti, you're not gonna see any difference in eSports titles. But where it gets more interesting is where, you know we look at a more modern title like uh, Halo Infinite, for example, I have here. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and you can see if we actually um, kind of take the settings down in terms of the resolution scaling, we can really push the FPS, right? So around here, it was in the 90, 100 range. If we drop it back down to, you know, a resolution scale of like 75%, so it's running at 1080p, you'll see that we can really up, kind of boost that FPS and uh, get it in the 120, 130 range. And you can even push it a little further if you want. And mind you, this is not overclocked. This is just the stock setting. So if you drop the resolution scale it down a little bit and overclock it even more, uh, you can really get in that 140, you know, maybe range. And with the 3070 Ti, um, without it overclocked, I was getting in that kind of uh, 
165 range, which is really awesome for a laptop like this. So kind of cool to see those settings. And uh, it's, it's really cool that you can kind of just tweak things a little bit in a competitive shooter like Halo, it really does make a difference there. So running the 3060 stock in a blender test that runs through three scenes, I got about 2470 in the benchmark. And then when I overclocked it, I only gained about 100 points. So nothing too significant. Uh, for reference, the 3070 Ti got about 3300. So about 25% better. Mind you, this is a synthetic benchmark. Um, if you want to Take a look at real world application. I will be putting at the end of this video a premiere test. So basically this video that you're watching when edited on both of these laptops, how they compare. So I can't discuss that now because obviously I haven't rendered the video yet, but I'll put that at the end so you can see a actual application of it. Uh, obviously the 3070 Ti will be faster, but how much faster remains to be seen. So yeah guys, to kind of wrap this up, uh, I really liked, you know, testing both these laptops out. I think they're really good kind of desktop replacement laptops as a content creator or a gamer. I think the 3060 or the 3070 version, you're really getting the most for your money there. And with some slight overclocking, you can edge towards the 3070 Ti performance a little bit. Now, as you know, I mentioned I'm looking for a replacement for my daily driver. I don't think either of these are it because they're kind of really big. I think I'll keep the 3060 version as more of a desktop replacement when I'm moving you know, around the house. If I want to work at a local coffee shop, the extra power is really nice to have and the mobility isn't too bad you know, if, with the right backpack. But I do think I'm still going to continue my search for the perfect kind of daily driver. And what I mean by that is something that's a little more portable, uh, a little thinner that I can really travel around with. I can put in my camera bag. And uh, so there are a couple options that are pretty enticing to me right now. I think the Galaxy Book 2 Pro and the Asus Flip 15, they kind of bring the weight down a little bit. Um, the Galaxy Book 2 even more, it's very light. Uh, those have the Intel Arc GPUs. So I haven't gotten my hands on one of those yet, but I'm really kind of curious to try one of those out. Uh, I would like to see how the driver support has gotten. They've been out for a few months now, but if you look on the internet, there really aren't many reviews of them. So I'd kind of be interested in looking at one of those. If this uh, video gets enough likes, then perhaps I'll do a review on one of those, or maybe even at some point I could compare the 350 versus the 370M GPU from Intel. That might be kind of interesting as well. Anyways, I hope that's a good wrap up um, for you in terms of whether these laptops are good for you if you're a gamer or if you're a content creator or just a professional that needs the horsepower of these. So like I mentioned, I'm not just reviewing laptops for the sake of reviewing them. I'm kind of in the process of searching for my own. So I'm trying things that I'm really interested in. And um, yeah, these take a lot of effort to make, so I'm not gonna be doing a ton of them, but I will be doing some laptop reviews. Uh, all the links below are affiliate links, so if you want to support the channel, uh, that is the best way to do so, purchasing through those at no additional cost to you. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.